people are constantly trying to influence us, tell us what to do. And just as often, we tune them out. However, there is that one moment of time in our lives when we all act differently, when we are in love, fall under some kind of spell. We can't even think straight, act foolish, do things we would never do otherwise. After some time, though, we surrender to this. This is the art of seduction. Now, the reason you most likely click this video is because you're a guy between the ages of 17 to 25 to find tips and tricks to get girls and be the ultimate light skin. And while, yes, this video will help with that, this book is a whole lot deeper than you think it is. Let's dive into the deep rules of the art of seduction. So the first and by far one of the most important aspects of this book is the nine seductive characters. First seducer of the nine is the siren. This is the woman who embodies sexual fantasy to the T. She represents femininity, freedom. This archetype you see a lot of the modern day female artists. Think like Nicki Minaj, Sexy Red, and Beyonce. Then there's the rake or in high school terms, the f boy. This seducer is a certified lover boy. Although they may be unfaithful, lying and manipulating, they are the perfect lover when present. They will always be there for you and never turn their back on you. Think like a Kevin Gates or maybe a ghost off power. Think about how they use their words to entrap people in endless fantasies, insinuating sexual activities without ever saying them directly. Next is the ideal lover or what I like to call the salesman. Pretty much these people play off your broken dreams, things you fantasize about all day, things you wish you had. So these people are like a doorway or vessel for you to live through them in a way. Have you ever felt like somebody was your other half? Like they just brought whatever to the table that you felt like you were missing within yourselves? It's because you found a way to live through them to pacify something that's not good or lacking within self. Next is the Dandian. Man, these guys are really freaking cool, bro. And they always will be. These individuals play on the fine line between masculinity and femininity. They're so different from everybody else. They can converse with both genders very fluidly and charismatically. They sometimes cross-dress, and they often are best at seducing those who have certain repressed genders or gender roles deep down within them. And these people are able to bring that out. And once again, people can live through them. Next is the natural. These are your children. Have you ever been around a child and you just can't help but smile, laugh, and just want to do things that you normally wouldn't do? It's because they bring out the childlike repressed self that you had to shun. That same child, inner child within you that had to be put in the background because of real world problems. The best example of this is Lil RT. While I don't really like how they got this kid in Smasher Passes, this young bright ball of energy of a young man that comes with him is what makes people love and adore him. He takes them back to simpler times, innocent times, even though they're basically robbing him of that for some money. Next is the coquette. Now, I personally am one of these people. These seducers know how to delay gratification. You know, being in our world, then you would know that everything these days is instant gratification. Instant noodles, instant videos, instant relationships with dating apps. Like, everything is so fast. Us coquettes know how to slow things down. They are hot and cold. Sometimes they feel like the love of your life, and sometimes they feel like a mere friend to you. These people will always keep you on your toes. Never will you ever feel like you'll truly know these individuals. A prime example of this is Soluminati, the GOAT of YouTube. He'll literally be here with his YouTube fan base, act like he loves all of us, and then he's just gone. Next is the charmer. One word, Duke Dennis. We live in a society where a lot of people, because of comparison and things like social media, have very low self-esteem, constantly bombarded with images and dreams of others, never quite feeling good enough. Charmers find a way to play to this exceptionally well. They make you feel like the center of attention, making you feel worthy, and ultimately, they sweep you off your feet by doing the same thing. Next is the charismatic. Now, I already think y'all know who is the charismatic. Kai Sinat, of course. These people are just like the natural in a way. Balls of energy with ever-glowing energy. If I had to describe this type of seducer, they're like a light bulb to the darkness. The thing that elevates them, though, above a normal charismatic person is they have a level of detachment. 
You never see them too close to any situation completely. They never seem too connected. They're never too caught in the past. Always moving forward charismatically. Last and foremost, there's not a lot of these, is the star. These people right here seem to be bigger than life. They always keep a distance, never getting too close or attached to anything. They're extremely mysterious. There's always an element of you don't know even half of them. Nobody can seem to touch them. Nobody can have them. That's what seems to make them irresistible. Think like Playboy Cardi, The Weeknd, Michael Jackson. And yeah, that is the nine seducers. You can be one or a mix of all these, right? Me personally, I feel like I'm almost a mix of all these. I, even if I'm not all of them currently, I've been every single one at a certain time in my life for a certain type of situation. And now let's get on to the biggest lessons that I learned from reading The Art of Seduction. So you can apply this to your life, not only for girls, business, but any real world situation where it calls for the aid of others. Number one, know your victim. Now I'd personally replace that since that sounds P. Diddy-ish and it's 2024 to know your environment. If you want to seduce and have a desired effect on certain energy, you must get to know it first. Throughout the book, it speaks of stories about certain seducers. And almost all seducers throughout history first try to find the needs of the environment, situation, or person they are trying to seduce. A prime example of this is a nun. She wants to seduce this gentleman who is known for having sex with a bunch of women. She is different in his eyes. She doesn't want sex with him immediately like most women. She doesn't want to see him 24-7. She is the star. She is the rape, the siren, the coquette, all in one. But more importantly, she understands the situation's needs, and she acts accordingly to get her desired effect. You must know the environment, the situation you're going in. So to be a master seducer, you have to pay attention to details, get to know the person, get to know the crowd, your target audience. All throughout life, you're just trying to sell either yourself or a product, either or. You're getting to know the situation and knowing what you're trying to sell and why that person should buy what you're trying to sell is the number one key to seduction. Number two, bruh, have fun with this shit, bro. Most people go into seducing a woman or trying to convince a person to do something antsy, nervous, impatient, thirsty. All serious killers of seduction. I'll make a separate video about that. But in all histories and tales of seduction, you see the best seducers are the ones who have fun. I've noticed even the best dates have been not where I went to a really nice restaurant or tried to plan something very serious or romantic. They were actually whenever I was doing something very simple, something very random, like going to a store and just enjoying, walking and talking. Some of the simplest things are normally the best things you can do. Number three, be desirable. This one should go without explaining personally, but I know there's going to be one entitled person in the back. If you look at yourself in the mirror and you can't love you, why would somebody else? You need to be appealing to the opposite gender. Groom yourself. Present yourself. Make sure it's in a way that both men and women look at you and go, he or she is someone that I can respect and potentially see myself with. You have to have a decent image. This is already half of the seduction. Impressions. Because if you can't even get in the club, what makes you think you deserve or can even acquire a VIP section? Four, connect with the energy you seek. Now, me personally, I think this is the most important one because you have to connect with the spirit of the people you want. See, when you make an initial connection or bond with someone, it's a lot easier to cherish, love, and accept them for who they are, flaws and all. So even if you mess up on all those things that I said above, and you're cooked, if you have a connection, you will be able to grow with that person more and be open to make more mistakes. Number five, confuse reality and illusion. The reason this is so important is because reality is bills, hurt, pain, loss. Illusion is love, freedom, dreams, hopes, wishes. But hear me when I say this. Please hear me when I say this. Something is fake, not achievable, and foolish until it's not. Something is fake, unachievable, and foolish until it's not. Prime example of this is Michael Jordan. Cut from JV. Five foot eight. Delusional. Not good enough or tall enough. But he deluded himself so much to the point where it became true. 
he deluded his brain into thinking that he was going to be ready enough to where his body grew to six foot five. None of his siblings were over five ten. Delusion is delusion only until you make it and focus on it enough until it's your reality. And I think these are the most important things about seduction throughout this book. There's a whole lot of other points in this book. But for me, either they tied into pretty much what I already said, or they were just completely psychotic. Because this nigga has some very crazy psychotic things. Anyways, though, I'll make another part on this book explaining all the anti-seducers and what you don't need to do that completely kills seduction. That way, y'all won't end up 40 with no kids with a cat in a one-bedroom apartment. Anyways, though, I appreciate you watching my video. And if you enjoyed it and took something from it, hit that button and share it with the friend. Because, man, we're trying to get to monetization. We're trying to, you know what I'm saying, get to 10K subscribers. And most importantly, I'm trying to change people's lives. You know what I'm saying? For real, man. But look, I'm Alex DeVirgo. If you appreciated my vid, come back for another one. Go check out all my other catalogs. You feel me? And join the Zodiac game. With that, though, I'm going to see you on the next one. Love.